Recovery Control, Hawaii. Hawaii alerts the captain of the Mason. He swings around and heads for 7-3, making 30 knots. Search aircraft scramble from Okinawa. They will be over the predicted landing point 10 minutes before the spacecraft splashes down. As Gemini 8 begins its seventh and final revolution, weather is excellent in the splashdown area. The crew is busy. The command pilot has time for only this brief reflection. I'd like to argue with them about going home, but I don't know how we can. That was all. Gemini 8 sweeps past Ascension Island. Retro fire will come up over Kano, Nigeria. Air to ground communications are broken, but the rockets fire right on the nose. The crew begins their descent through the atmosphere. This is the view they will see for a long time, the high peaks of the Himalayas. After these forbidding mountains, the sweep of the Pacific will look friendly and hospitable. Waiting for Gemini 8 are rescue aircraft circling in the landing area, ready to pick up an electronic signal from the spacecraft. Two aircraft from Okinawa were originally assigned here, but five others were quickly alerted and added to the recovery team. When Gemini 8 is only three miles away, a C-54 catches sight of it on the main landing parachute. After that, landing is almost routine, and Gemini 8 landed within two miles of the predicted impact point. The first pararescue swimmer in the water is Airman First Class Neal. Airman Neal is a veteran of combat rescue work and a good man to have on your side. He was quickly followed by two other rescue swimmers. It was early afternoon in the Pacific, but almost 11 o'clock at night in the Atlantic where the USS Boxer had waited. The Mason, three hours away at splashdown, reached the area at 3.17 p.m. local time. Crew and spacecraft, both in good shape, were soon aboard. Within 72 hours, NASA scientists would pin down the source of trouble. A short circuit in the wiring of the number eight yaw thruster had caused it to fire erratically. The possibility of this failure recurring is slight, but a master switch has now been added to the Gemini spacecraft. The crew control this switch and cut off all power to the attitude thrusters in any future flight. Once the difficulty was corrected, we could take time out to realize that Gemini 8 had brought us closer to lunar exploration by demonstrating the first successful dock in space. also gave many of us our first look at men like the three young rescue swimmers, Airman Neal and Moore and Staff Sergeant Hewitt, as well as the captain and crew of the Mason. Men who are there in every flight, on remote stations, doing their duty and doing it well. It was these men who sighted Gemini 8 on the parachute and took the crew and spacecraft safely aboard the Mason. At that point, we knew that the long months of training and the many simulations and the close interplay between NASA and the Department of Defense were sound. The mission is ended. The control room is empty, but it will soon fill up again as simulations begin for the next flight. We had achieved our first docking in space. We experienced our first orbital abort. In both cases, Gemini 8 came through with flying colors. <laughs>